So we've made a bit of a mistake. We've um, almost finished fairing the transom extension, the sugar scoop extension. And we're just starting to look into the non-skid and making that non-skid mold so that we can make the piece that we glue onto this onto that bottom onto the swim platform. But we don't have a piece of non-skid big enough on the boat to do it in one piece. So we we're looking at having to do one of these joins in it. I don't know if you can see that. But make a join in it, which would look terrible. So we went for a little walk in the marina and one of our really good friends, Ilya, has a Nordatec 46 and he's got a piece of non-skid on his boat that is the perfect size. So we've asked him if we can take a mould off his boat and he's just sold his boat. So it would be an absolute disaster if we leave any trace of us doing a mould on his boat. But he said we can do it and we've just got to back ourselves. But just as a security, working on a, uh, another lagoon over there is Felix and he is the best glass guy in Linton Bay. There's Hi, Felix. Hi. How's it going bro? All good? Oh, so he's the man to just give us that final bit of confidence to not leave a mark on Ilya's boat. I'm nervous. I'm, a, I'm that healthy amount of nervous. I'm like nervous enough to be really 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 cautious. Um, but also am confident that we're not going to leave. As long as we wax this thing up properly, the mold will come off his boat and uh, we won't leave a trace. You nervous? <laughs> I would be. Yeah. How many times have you done this before? Many times. Many times. All right. Well, Felix has given you a 100% no damage guarantee. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to wax it up, we're going to do two layers of wax and two layers of PVA and um, on his little test pieces down here it looked like it was going to come off really nicely so that's the plan. There we go, two coats of PVA, two coats of wax underneath that and tomorrow morning we'll do one more of PVA and then we'll roll the gel coat but we'll show you as we go. Now it's protected for the night. How are you? <laughs> What's for breakfast? Rice in a pan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to put one more coat, one more layer of PVA on there. So that will mean it's had two layers of wax and three layers of PVA. And then we'll be starting to roll gel coat in there. So let's get into it. So this is pretty much the most important step. This is what's going to stop the gel coat, the new gel coat, from sticking for the, to the existing gel coat. We want this gel coat to go down, but we want the entire thing, every last little molecule of it, to come up together so that we can actually use the mold. Because one little imperfection in the middle of it, and the whole thing's useless. Concentration on this one. So it's tacked off, definitely, but it's far from cured. It's still a little bit wet. The reason why we need this to be a little bit more cured is because the next step is to um, put gel coat filler over it with a, with a spreader. So we don't want to have it uncured and have the possibility of that spreader pulling any of the gel coat out of the non-skid. Um, so we want it nice and, nice and firm, nice and tacked off. So it's just started raining. We've just closed all the covers. 
Bam. This is drying here. All right, we're ready. It's uh, nice and cured there. So he's just starting to mix up a little bit of the filler. Filler is um, gel coat with, um, they call it talco, and a little bit of micro spheres in it. And that's gonna go over the gel coat that we just rolled, and then two layers of fiberglass on top of that. Alright guys, that's one layer of top mat down, um, he's going to mix up another batch of resin and we'll put one more layer on top of that. All done, now it's just a waiting game, um, when it's nice and cured, like fully cured, we'll attempt to lift that up. So. Here we are guys, we've waited two hours now, and it's super cured, feels good, no heat coming off it anymore, he's just going to start a little corner here, alright guys we're going to try and peel it up now, this is the moment of truth, so got the corner up, So he's got a piece of wood that he just shaped to no, have no, a no, point no. on the end. Here you go. Good work. If anyone wants any work done around Linton Bay, Felix is your man. I'll leave his email address in the description below. But awesome. So this is our mold, guys. We can make several 
we can make several um, pieces of non-skid out of this one mold. So we're going to take good care of this. I'm going to put it in our spare cabin at the moment. And we're not going to touch it until we need it. So this is the mold. So the, the, the little square or diamond pattern is indented into the mold. So you can't use this for anything except the mold. Anything we lay into it will have the diamonds um, protruding. So that's how it works. So once we lay the gel coat inside this and put the fiberglass and everything on top, exactly the same process but the opposite, um, then that will be our new non-skid piece to go onto the extension. Excelente! All right, now for the big cleanup. So obviously he's got another survey tomorrow. The boat is sold, but he's got another survey tomorrow. Um, so we got to make sure this is absolutely spotless and get out of here like we were never here because at the moment it's a mess. All right, guys, so I've got an announcement to make. Um, I've taken a job on a soup yacht and it's going to take me to Europe for a couple of months, um, which means let me get my head around this. So as you're watching this right now, I am working on the super yacht already in real time. I'm just not gonna have any time to be able to edit videos while I'm working on the super yacht whatsoever. So um, from now in real time, this time, uh, where there may be a few weeks where there's no episodes and I apologize that, about that. Um, I've used up all of the footage, literally, um, that I have which means when I go back to Parley here um, I will start filming again and after a week of filming I'll start editing again and so that means the videos from now on will be um, basically two weeks behind real time so that's exciting um, because I'm taking a job Jamie's also taking a job so one of our friends Jeff he has bought an 82 foot Nordatec catamaran and they're gonna do sort of crewing experiences around the Caribbean and Jamie is the captain of that boat now so I'm super super happy for him he had never sailed before joining me on Parlay that was three years ago so I've basically taught him everything he knows which is a scary thought and he's taking that knowledge now and he's running an 82 foot um, catamaran and they're going to be sailing all around the um, Caribbean. Um, if anybody wants to join him, um, they do take crew. So you could just message him on Instagram at uh, Vandenbolt Jamie and uh, just reach out to him. Say, have you got any more spots? I think they charge around $50 per day, including all the food and everything like that. That's a pretty standard rate for uh, catamaran cruising. So what's in store for Parlay now? Uh, we're about to do a huge lithium installation. We have to do a complete overhaul of all of our navigation systems. So we've got new um, autopilots, radars, chart plotters, everything. Brand new. Um, we've got a water maker installation to finish. Um, so there's some really exciting stuff coming up. And then we're going to go in the water and we're going to do a sea trial. And we're going to check out what happens with these bulkheads. Then we will go through the Panama Canal. And sail up towards Mexico, so Costa Rica, Nicaragua, all of those amazing countries and then head across the Pacific and that will be a huge milestone for us to reach New Zealand, um, my home country and spend five, six months there and then we'll carry on. So the goal for this boat, if you've been following for a while, you know that this boat is going to do a circumnavigation. No matter what it takes, we're going to do it. Leaving my boat for two months is never easy, but when a job opportunity comes along for me to earn some good money, I have to take it, especially with all the unexpected expenses I've encountered over the last year, including finding cracked bulkheads and getting struck by lightning. Luckily, Sylvia had offered to look after the two dogs while we were away, so knowing they are in good hands was really reassuring for me. Last time I left my boat for work, one of my dogs passed away with a blood infection so I was hesitant to take the job at first. Palais has been my home for three and a half years, where I'm the owner, the captain, doing everything in my own time, and I knew it was going to be a huge adjustment to get into the regimented lifestyle that is being a chief engineer on a super yacht. 
But ever since I left home when I was 22 years old, with a one-way ticket to Europe, I've learned to follow my intuition, and it was telling me this was an opportunity I had to take. So away I went. Hey guys, I've made it to the hotel, I've just had a shower, I'm all freshened up. Um, I've already asked the super yacht if I can film and they've said no, it's a very private yacht, very private program. Um, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get any footage for the next couple of months. But like I said, uh, we'll be rolling episodes again soon. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when that next episode comes out. And thank you all so much for following, we'll see you soon.